we sat with the president and we were like, listen, we have this dream of um, creating a football league or a football team, a women's football team in Gozo. When you play with the boys, it's tougher, it's more endurance. So you get used to playing at a higher level. Every time you hear the national anthem, it's it's very, very emotional. It gets very emotional. And you're there representing your country. It, it gives a feeling of, okay, let's do this for home, you know? So it's, it's a very nice feeling. It's a challenge in Malta also because there isn't much, a lot of investment in, in women's football. If it was for me, I, I train twice daily, even three times. I'm willing, we are, we are willing to do that. But unfortunately, I have to work. We train all our lives for this game, so it's very important that when we go out there, we enjoy the moment as well. When I step on the field, I make myself aware. I'm like, okay, this is it, you know? There's nothing like, else. There's nothing else, this is it. Nothing else can get in the way of this. I, f I feel, I feel, I feel it's a special moment for women's sport in Malta. Hey! Welcome back to The She Word, where we have conversations that women rarely have, but really should. My name is Sasha, host for this edition of The She Word, the young women's edition, where we are having conversations which are more tailored towards a younger demographic of women. We've got a special show for you today, Young Women and Football, and I'm joined here today by three Maltese football players who play for the women's national football team. These amazing women are just days away from playing in a match which could change Maltese football forever, as they've got the opportunity to go up a division. We're here today precisely because of that. These women deserve all the support and recognition for how far they've brought Malta's football team. Especially because shocking statistics show that attention on women's sports is very minimal, with only 15% of airtime coverage and a measly 1% of sponsorship revenue going towards women's sports. But women's participation and success in sports is well on the rise. So without further ado, I'm joined here today by 27-year-old Sean Azamit, who plays as a midfielder and is also a sports psychologist. 27-year-old Janice Schwerep, who plays as a goalkeeper, and Emma Schwerep, 31 years old, who is also a physiotherapist, three women playing for Malta's national football team. Ladies, thank you all for joining me today and making time amid your busy schedules. I know how busy you all are, and I'm really, really grateful to have you all on this table. We truly appreciate it. Now, I want to start off by hearing a bit about each and every one of you. So could you each introduce yourselves and share a bit about your journey in football and how you ended up here? You want to start us off? So first of all, thank you for inviting us here um, to speak about some of our experiences. Um, so I started football um, at a very young age when I was five years old. Um, I used to, my father is a coach. So I used to go with him to the training sessions and I always wanted to join in um, with the training sessions, with the boys. And from there on, um, I kept on going. Um, it, it, it was obviously very challenging at first because um, football is a male dominating sport. Mm -hmm. um, so at that time, especially the mentality was even more difficult for a girl to play football. Um, but we all do it for, for, for the love of the sport. Um, and somehow we, we all kept uh, playing football to arrive um, here. I mean, you started at six years old. That is a very young age. Like you were always attracted to it. Um, uh, I think it is something, I, I don't know if it, it was something natural or because I was introduced um, to football 
by the help of my father uh -huh. but obviously i think the 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 thing that always kept me going is that i was never forced to play football and it is something i think that really made the difference um even though i was sometimes i struggled to fit in with the with the male football players even from a young age mm -hmm. obviously because at that time i wasn't that good so i think it's it's quite normal that young boys and girls um choose and be selective at that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. um and i was not much introduced by 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 the male footballers at that time but because i was never forced to do it i always did it because i wanted to because i love the sport i kept on persevering i kept on pushing and ultimately it was rewarding amazing amazing thank you shona emma Tell so, us a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, so no, it, my story is quite different to that of Shona. Um, uh, basically, I remember being at the at the age of like eight, nine, and um, asking my parents if I could go to play football with a boys team, with my brother's team. And I remember my older brother actually was there as well, present. And their first reaction the moment I asked, they were like, "Oh no, it's a boy sport." Um, you will start acting like a boy and, and uh, you know, <laughs> the, the young girl that I was, I didn't argue that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, okay, I, ac I accepted that response and I just um, followed my brother by watching him train and I just stood in the stands while he trained. So I attended every training session that he went to oh, wow. and I just stayed outside watching him. Every now and then, I remember me stealing a ball and just passing to the wall alone. I remember doing that. But um, I remember I spent months doing this, and uh, if not years. And then ultimately, um, I, met, I met this group of girls at school, and we started playing. Um, we, we all had something in common, which was sports, basically. Um, and at the time, we used to play basketball, and we weren't great at it. <laughs> Um, so we decided we took the opportunity to, to switch to football. So from basketball, we switched to football. Um, we went up to a football club in Gozo, um, SK Victoria Wanderers at the time. Um, we sat with the president and we were like, listen, we have this dream of um, creating a football league or a football team, a women's football team in Gozo. Like, would you be willing to support us in that? And he was very open to it. He went on to speak to Gozo Football Association and they came up with a league. Um, wow. Different clubs from Gozo put out these applications and then all of a sudden they're like, they were like hundreds of girls that wanted to play football. And it created this league f which was uh, formed by six different teams. Every team had minimum of 20 players and it, it was an amazing like experience. And... Um, you basically so, uh, started it all in Gozo and you got it in yourself. Yes, right? yes, I'm, I'm, I come from Gozo, yes, I'm got it in. So uh, that's how we started in Gozo. Like, I, I had no idea that women's football existed at all in Malta. Oh. Like, that, that was something inexistent in my mind. Now that I'm in it and, and I've been uh, involved for this, these many years, um, I know that at the time there was a women's team in Malta. I just didn't know about it because in Gozo we weren't informed about and these things. And this was when? When are we talking about? This was like, so I started in 2008. So I was like 14, 15, 15 I was actually, 15, which is quite, quite late. Young. Quite late for a football player exactly. to start football. Um, I was when I was younger, younger than 15, I used to play at school. I remember waking up early to go to school to, just to play football before lectures. So that was my only occasion to, to play football. But then after the league, um, there was Pierre Binkat, who was the national team coach at the time, and he heard about this league in Gozo, and he came to scout us. And that's when I was chosen to be part of the national team. Oh, wow. So, so you basically kind of forged your own destiny there. Uh, sort of, yes. I mean, th thank to, thanks to my friends, because they came up with, my two best friends at the time, they came up with this idea of uh, speaking to this club. Um, she's a football coach nowadays, uh, Melania Vallada. She used to coach Denise, actually. Um, they came up with the idea to speak to this club, and it's thanks to this idea that uh, the rest is history. Like, incredible, I am incredible. where I am now. So yeah. you're all sharing this passion, but before we get to that, Janice... Tell us a bit about yourself and how you ended up here. So um, I started playing football when I was six years old. My brother is four years 
older than me and he used to, to play football and he always used to come home. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. And I was like, dad, uh, my brother, he is having fun. And my grandmother had a big yard and we used to play football. My brother used to train actually, and he used to put me in goal. So he can train just shooting. And he would be like, you're better than our goalkeeper. You're better than <laughs> our goalkeeper. And then I was like, dad, my brother is having fun. He's saying, I'm good. Can I please go to this MC, the place that he always mentions? And my dad was like, do you want to come? Come. <laughs> and then the first, I, I still remember the first training session. I was the only girl because as Shona mentioned, um, we were um, very few girls playing football. So most mm -hmm. of us used to play with a team, um, just boys. And the coach said, you're a goalkeeper. And he told the boys, everyone gets a ball online. So my first training session was all boys lining up. I am in goal and they shoot me <laughs> um, one each time. <laughs> And then uh, I was, it's like I was a little bit promising from, from a young age. And then how I did started. did that test go? How many, how many balls did they manage to get in? I don't know. Oh, but then the <laughs> first game we played, I remember we won 4-2. We, we played a game, so it was like a week after, and we won 4-2. And then um, at 10, I was selected with the regionals. Wow, at 10 years old. But as Shona mentioned, it was a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. Luckily, um, my teammates used to support me a lot because we used to go play another team. And when they see a female goalkeeper, they used to laugh. Oh, MC that has a female goalkeeper. We're going to score a lot of goals. And then they used to say, no, my teammates used to step up for me. And they used to say, now we play. And you see how many goals you'll score. Mm -hmm. And then after the game, I always got the respect of the opponents. But you always had to earn it. Yes. It was never like given to you. Like it no, the, yeah. that, that, that's the first story reaction, like that, yeah. they always used to laugh at me, always. And do you still get that to this day? No. No, no. Nowadays, but nowadays they don't play with boys anymore. Exactly. Oh, so I, I think it is a positive and a negative because I believe the... The secret for the growth of women's football is by playing with the boys. Okay. So, so nowadays, what kind of equalizes it? Nowadays, not not all girls have the opportunity yeah. to play with boys. Um, I think only, it makes you tougher. Only the promising girls gets the opportunity to play with the boys now mm -hmm. because even nurseries nowadays they do. Um, it's like a selection. Mm -hmm. For instance, Birkirkara, Pieta, Valletta. They do a selection. So if the girl is not promising, it will be difficult for her to play with the boys. Okay. But then we're trying to improvise. For instance, I am part of the MFA coaching of the IFF. The, okay. We do friendlies against the boys. So we, we, that element, we keep it, that playing against the boys. Because when you play with the boys, it's tougher, it's more endurance. So you get used to playing at a higher level than if you're playing with just girls. So there's a positive and a negative. So I, I was very intrigued by the fact that both of you used to actually play with boys when you were young. Like that must have been quite challenging in its, in its own right, you know, I mean... Yes, for sure. I mean, it, it, it is challenging and unfortunately, unlike Janice, Janice was... Like she said, she was promising from a young age. And she was supported. S exactly. Did you find so, support? So maybe from her side, from her point of view, it wasn't that tough. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she had a, a tougher role because a goalkeeper of getting course. shots from, from a boy is different. But until you're 12 years old, you won't see that difference. When, But from 13 and over, that would be felt. Eh? The power, the speed, everything would be felt. I experienced a bit of that at school. I remember getting my best friend, who's a female, who was a female at the time, and, and we used to, like, just so I don't feel alone, around, surrounded by these boys, I used to take her with me. She wasn't interested in football whatsoever. And then halfway through the game, I realized that she would have left and is playing netball on the other side. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm fine. 
I'm just gonna stay here and I'm just gonna play. And I remember like they wouldn't pass the ball, they wouldn't include me in, in the attacking until I scored my first goal. Then I scared my scored my first goal and then everyone, ooh, Emma's on our team, we want her on our team. Then the narrative changes. So, so like uh, like they said, you, yeah. you have to like prove yourself. Exactly. There's this recurring yeah. theme of having to prove yourself Definitely. just because you're a woman. Definitely, yes. So now, okay, so we all started from a relatively young age. Six years old, 15. Yeah. And now you're playing at, at a high level to the point that you are representing your own country. Like, that, that's quite massive. Yeah, definitely. Like, what does it mean for you personally to re- be representing your home country on the national stage in women's football? It's, it's obviously a huge honor. Every time you step on that pitch, every time you wear the kit, every, every time you hear the national anthem, it's, it's very, very emotional. It gets very emotional. Um, whether you're playing a friendly, whether you're playing an international game, whether you're playing um, a decisive match like the one we have next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they're all different levels, but they all give us the same amount of pride, the amount of joy. And obviously in that moment, all the sacrifices that you did during the past years, they they mean nothing because you're there, you're enjoying it. Like you said, you earned it. So nothing is giving, given to us for free. And I think that's the, the nice part about women's football and female players playing, in a, in, playing football. Because we always had it the, the tough way. Yeah. N- nothing we had nothing easy. I mean, we it always... practically didn't exist if you literally had exactly. to play with, with with the males, right? We always had to earn it. Yeah. So then when you're there, you know that you're there because like me, Emma, Jenny, sold the stuff because obviously we cannot do it alone. Um, there are many people that they don't actually play football, but they help us um, in many different ways. And... When you're there, everything, like you forget everything and everything is worth it. It's all worth it. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Emma? No, I totally agree. Um, it's, a, it's a huge honor. And the moment you put on that shirt, the, the national team shirt, it, the feeling is you can't really describe it. I mean, and, and what impresses me the most is that the feeling doesn't change. Like it doesn't go away. You know, I, I keep saying this. If that feeling ever goes away, that, that's my sign to stop football. But it doesn't go away. I've been, I've been part of the national team for 16 years now. Wow. And it doesn't change. Like, the, like last, last Friday, standing there, listening to your national anthem in, in a country abroad, mm-hmm. away from home, and you're there representing your country, it, it gives a feeling of, okay, let's do this for home, you know? So it, it's a very nice feeling. It's beautiful. What about you? Obviously, I, I agree with them. And I think it's something special to honor the previous players because they had Definitely. it even tougher than us because yeah. now it's, develop- it's developing um, the players that played before us. They had literally nothing. nothing. Mm-hmm. And they created the path mm-hmm. for us. And I I feel a certain a certain of responsibility I think they feel it too Mm -hmm. because now we have a responsibility to even we're we're doing our best to create an even better path Mm -hmm. to the The younger generation and there are players like Rachel Koshkiri they've done something amazing which is playing abroad Mm -hmm. and now they are creating the opportunity because before Rachel, Hayley, Maria Elenia, before every player that went play abroad, it wasn't you used to see it as something that it's not manageable. Mm-hmm. But something now, out of this world, not something. Of, but really. now seeing all these players play abroad, they can even have it as a career. Because as we said, we work, we have to juggle for us. It's more difficult than professional players mm-hmm. because we have to juggle a, a two full times, literally, because um I don't feel it's even a part-time because the commitment, true. the hours, the effort, even when you're not training, um, oh. when you're not training and then the day after you have training, you have to rest. So it's very challenging to work, to rest. Mm-hmm. So the younger generation can see it as a career, not mm-hmm. just as a hobby mm-hmm. like, like we did because exactly. we always saw it 
as a hobby and i think on the side like definitely and i think that's it gives it's also like shona mentioned earlier it's even a positive thing because we do it simply because we love it mm-hmm. so that's something and and having saying this um so we're paving the way for the younger generation but we make sure they don't take it for granted yeah you know so I, I I was lucky enough to see the transition happening in front of my eyes. So I started in 2009. We didn't have a physical preparator. We only had a coach, assistant coach, physio and a doctor. That's it. Today we have a kit manager, we have a physical preparator, we have a match analyst. You know, so I remember us wearing the kits of men's kits. So I'm already small myself. So imagine wearing a, a size of. Didn't of, even have your own. No, 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 no. Like the, the kits were massive. The, these little details, which um, the, the the players older than us, I remember them fighting for them. Mm-hmm. You know, complaining like, listen, we 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 deserve to have a, at least a kit which yeah. fits us properly. You know. Um, so it started with these little things and how we make sure that the, the younger generation have things as they should be, mm-hmm. but they don't take it for granted, you know, and they keep pushing for, you know, to break boundaries, basically. Mm-hmm. So you've mentioned two things which I want to touch upon. Um, first off, role models. Were, was there someone that you looked up to? You mentioned a few, but were there any people that you looked up to when you were young, female footballers who were already making it i think on a on a national level not really but perhaps internationally where was there anyone at all um uh-huh. i don't think any of us had a lot of female idols because women's football wouldn't have been broadcasting exactly. globally so for us it would have been i never had a foreign female idol and i think now there is mary herbs but it's nowadays that young goal, female goalkeepers has an idol because players, there was maybe Marta, there was Pop, but um, in the goalkeeping sector, I never I never really knew any female international goalkeepers that used to play. So I didn't really have an idol. Mm-hmm. Someone which really helped me develop in my career is um, the Birkara form, former goalkeeper. She used to play for the Malta national team as well. Her name is Nina. Um, she's like a mother figure for me in, in football. Um, what she knew, she taught me. She always stood by my side, always coached me the best that she knew. So for me, she was my role model, but mm-hmm. also she was a mother figure. Mm-hmm. Because if I didn't have her, we never had a coach. I mean, Birkir Kara, we used to have goalkeeper coaches coming now and then, but we never really had a goalkeeper coach. I used to pay privately a goalkeeper coach. I still do. They used to support one session and I used to pay for the second session. Now, from this year, they brought a goalkeeper coach who comes tw- twice a week and eh? not even all training sessions. So uh, it's still uh, developing. Mm-hmm. And what about you? Was there anyone at all who, who maybe inspired you or even, as she said, supported your journey to, to where you are now? I think uh, I agree completely with Janice. The, the exposure wasn't there. The, the female football wasn't exposed when we were young. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't know anyone who I could possibly look up to as a female player, like playing abroad. Um, I support Germany, so my role models were um, male footballers, like and playing in my position that I look up to. I tried to do the same things they did, even get the same haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, okay, no. okay, those no. are things that you do when you're at a young age. So what type of haircuts are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> shaving <hair. laughs> Quite close. No, but spiky hair. Yes. I used to go up to my room. I shouldn't say this. <laughs> but I used to go, like, um, in my room, I used to tell my dad, can you cut my, my fringe? So, so it will be short so enough to do it. Spiky. <laughs> but um, they were nice things that 
I think they show that you're really in love with mm. what you're doing mm. because you're like completely focused. You you don't care about what other things, what other people think. Um, you're just like you're in a zone. Mm -hmm. You you're in a bubble. You want to do that type of thing. My father, even my mother, they always supported me like through it. So they never stopped me from playing football. Even like when I was juggling between studies and football, I never had a problem to juggle with both. Obviously, it's it's hard because the time time is limited. Like Jenny said, you you you, sh you have to find a balance between school, work, training, personal life because if not, you'll end up um, missing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's doable mm -hmm. if, if you plan well and try to fit in mm -hmm. everything. It, it's it's doable. And that's another point that we'll get to very soon. But first, you uh, was there I anyone did. who inspired you who deserved um, the mention? Obviously, like they said, I didn't really have a female footballer that I could look up to. I remember looking up and found Mia Hamm of USA. Like she's one of the very beginning of women's football in, in America. Uh, but I look up, looked up to, to Ronaldo, the number nine of Brazil, because we were obsessed with Brazil. Uh, but my older brother and younger brother, my brothers, are definitely like what inspired me and what kept kept me going at football. Like, um, especially, especially my older brother, um, we, we're quite similar um, in the way we play and, and like our run and all that. I remember when I was young, they used to see me at training and were like, oh my God, you're, you're Steve's brother. Oh, you're Steve's sister, sorry. You're Steve's sister, for sure. So um, I used to attend all training sessions and all their football matches. So I had definitely them who like they inspired me to. Then out of football, I definitely have to mention my father right? because he was huh. my number one. He was and still, still is, is my number one supporter. So um, he always drove me. He always took me to all these football schools, uh, zoo, training camps. My, but my father has a personal business okay. and he used to make sure that he stops working at three every day and that would cost him i don't know like 50 maltese pounds every day so he because my mother didn't used to drive so he always had to drive me and he i never missed a session and he never missed a game and he still does come to watch me play not all games but he still does for and on tuesday he made sure mm. he wrote it on his diary noel to work till three <laughs> so he makes sure and he always called make um when i'm in the hotel make sure to call me after the game mm -hmm. okay make sure to call me mm -hmm. and so if it wasn't for my father i would never have made it because he supported my way big time well shout out to all the amazing people who have who have been so, so supportive of your journeys we've already mentioned so women's football has come a long way in recent years especially in recent years but what are some of the biggest challenges you faced as a female football player in malta shona i think like i mentioned before the fact that it was still something good that a female that a girl plays football Mm. Um, but apart from that, when I, when I moved to a girls team, obviously there are a lot of resources missing compared to the boys team. Um, you get the bare, the bare minimum, even like anything you can imagine. Like it was, we, we always had to fight for it. And like Janice mentioned, we had it good, the people like before us, it was even worse for them. So in my case, it wasn't that tough compared to obviously the past players that had to earn everything from scratch. Um, I think the most challenging part about my football career was when I was young, like to try to fit in with the boys team. Because if I was like not determined enough that I really want this thing, I wouldn't have made it for sure. I would have stopped. I, and even if I was forced, for example, to do it, I would have stopped. But because I was free to do whatever I want, like um, training wise, and I was myself and I really wanted like to do it, 
I managed to continue playing. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the main challenging part that, that I faced during the years. What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works, in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. What about you, Emma? Yeah, I mean, as Shona mentioned, the resources is the main thing. Um, but I remember our training sessions, it was always, um, it had to happen after the men's training session. So we always trained either at 8 p.m. or at 8.30, sometimes even at 9. I did have training sessions starting at 9 p.m. Wow. So imagine in winter, in that cold weather, we had to go to training at, at 8.30 in the evening. Um, so you have an hour and a half, so till like 10, the next morning I have to either go to school or, or work. Um, so that was a challenge in itself. Um, unfortunately, um, along the way you meet people who don't believe in women's football. So, oh, these girls are going to play football. Uh, like for them, it was a waste of time. Not everyone, because we were lucky enough to have others on, like on the other side then that were very supportive and they fought for us. And if it wasn't thanks to these people who believed in us from day one, we wouldn't be here where we are right now, you know? Um, it's a challenge in Malta also because there isn't much, a lot of investment in, in women's football. What, what do I mean by that? My full-time job is a physiotherapist. If I don't work as a physiotherapist, if I haven't studied, if I don't have this degree and I work as a physiotherapist, I cannot have an income from football. Mm-hmm. So we're always limited in the aspect of our level of football. How high can it go? Mm-hmm. If it was for me, I, I train twice daily, even three times. I'm willing. We are, we are willing to do that. But unfortunately, I have to work. You know, how, how can I live if I don't get paid for it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we're limited in that aspect. Um, also, coaches. Um, now there are more coaches interested in women's football because I feel coaching a male team and a female team it's quite different definitely and once you're in it you realize how different it is you know um so uh, there weren't a lot of coaches involved in women's football sometimes I was in teams where I had just one coach and no assistant coach so no one had to do everything on his own you know and and um and it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female, because I, I find this stupid when people ask me, ah, do you prefer a fa- male coach or a female coach? I don't care. I just want a good coach. Yeah. You know, so uh, when someone asks me that question, I find it a problem in itself, someone asking me that question. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to have any differences between a guy and a girl. So why are you asking me if I want a female coach or a male coach? You know, I just want a good coach. I remember I had times also when I went to tra- we went to training and we find the pitch closed and the lights are off and we, want to, we have to train and the club just forgot to open for us or, or for, forgot to rent the, the pitch for us. These things have happened during oh. our journey like to get to, to where we are now. Even luckily it, now. Luckily now we're much better. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. club, I mean, I'm, I play for Sweetie. Luckily they're fighting for us. You know, they, they give us stuff for recovery with wise butts, the, the simple things, the simplest of things. Mm-hmm. But at least with the simple things we have, we, we try, do our best, you know, to, to get it the, the best way possible. And you, you see know. the progress as well. That's exactly. what's important. Yes, that yes, we're always yes. progressing, definitely, right? What definitely. do you want to say? No, but as they mentioned, for them it was difficult to train <laughs> with one coach. Imagine for goalkeepers who has to learn the technique of the goalkeepers mm-hmm. without, without a coach. Without a coach, I was going to say without, without a coach. coach. Yeah. Um, luckily, I was. I always tried to, for example, if there was, Birkara used to have a goalkeeper coach for boys. I used to want to go, but no one would have, if I didn't want to go and really did an effort to go, no one would have told me, look, you have goalkeeper training on Monday. So I used no one would, to, would have offered no, you that no opportunity. One would have offered, mm-hmm. But then to say anything when I wanted to go, no one ever refused. So, mm-hmm. but I would, for example, go with the goalkeepers, and then I would have to go to another place because would, the goalkeepers would train at four, for example, and then my team would be training at six at another pitch. Mm-hmm. So I would have gone to the goalkeepers training and then go to the other pitch. 
But if I didn't want to go, if I didn't check the times, who's the coach, I wouldn't have had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult for them, for goalkeepers, it was more difficult. Um, even we don't have a lot of goalkeeper coaches in Malta. And obviously the good goalkeeper coaches would not work in women's football where the income is very, very, very minimal. They would, the, the few goalkeeper coaches, they would work in the men's sector because yeah. they pay obviously much more. So, and then another thing which I struggled was not related to football because I, I was, my teammates used to step up for me in football, but then you would got called names, for example, tomboy, and you're like a boy. We used to, I used to go through these things. So yes, that yes, was sure. a little bit difficult for me. I, I didn't used to like it when they used to call me tomboy. Sometimes I, at that moment, I wouldn't show them mm -hmm. because I was tough. <laughs> but then when I used to go home, I used, used to, to feel it. I used to feel it. So. Yeah. So yeah. you've all mentioned this act of basically balancing everything. You also work full time apart yes. from participating in the national team. And you've also managed, mentioned that you've had to manage this also when you were studying. So it's not just you've always had to find this kind of balance um, and the time. How do you find the time? to keep up with the commitments of being in the national team. It's all about setting, sort of planning the time. I mean, setting priorities. And, and prioritizing, number one. And um, it feels like the, the older we grow, the worse it's becoming. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I, I was telling them this week. I, I spent the past months or, or couple, like couple of weeks leaving the house with three backpacks in the morning wow. at 6 a.m. <laughs> Why? Because I have to go to work. After work, I go do my part-time or, or, or I do my extra session, because that's the thing, to maintain your fitness, to maintain the, the high level of, of football you want to You're reach, not. the high level of physicality you want to reach. You need to work, do the extra work. Exactly. So work, extra work related to training, and then you go to your training session. You know, so it's all about planning, prioritizing, uh, and then everything leads to another because to do that extra session, you have to, to remove something. Mm -hmm. For exactly. example, I have to reduce two hours of sleep because I used to train at 5 a.m. the morning the, or 6, the morning session, then go to work, then go to training. But then obviously you have to, and football, it's, Everything is together, nutrition, recovery, exactly. training. Definitely. And then Definitely. obviously take you're, time as well. you're mm -hmm. not getting the full circle because obviously you're reducing something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. either it's sleep, other it's, or, or training. Social life. Social, social life. life. Well, social my, life. My, my, have a social life. My friends, my friends are in Thailand at the moment. So I, I had to, I had, like, it's, I told them I can't social come, life, it's very know? difficult. And even for our partners who are not part of football, yeah. for them it's very, very difficult because they won't. Uh, uh, to understand someone who plays football mm -hmm. as a hobby, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like but on a national time. level. Because <laughs> obviously when so it's we... It's a hobby, but it's full-time. Yeah, it's quite thing. bizarre, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Obviously, when we play, we play professionals. Exactly. So then the mentality, uh, what level am I going to play? Am I going to train like a professional to play a professional? Because then we get criticized. People don't care that we're not a professionals. When we lose to Denmark, mm -hmm. they would say, oh, Malta, they lost. 7-0 against Denmark, but they don't care <laughs> that to play to Denmark, we mm -hmm. try to do two sessions a day, with, we reduce our sleep, and then obviously if you're not getting the full amount of sleep, mm -hmm. there would be stress, because everything is a circle. Exactly, so. exactly. So the, the Malta's women's national football team has been performing exceptionally well recently. But for some reason, we're always hearing about men's football more than we hear about women's. Do you feel this imbalance? And can you perhaps share some experiences with gender, gender imbalance in football, especially also from like a media level? Like, What are your thoughts on the media's representation 
of women's football in Malta? I think I think that we shouldn't compare. I think we shouldn't compare female football with male's football. I think it's com- two completely different things. Obviously, they're the same sport. We fall under the same association, but they're two completely different things. I I'm. I mean, the, the income is different. So I, I get angry about us not getting the same amount of, for example, resources, the same amount of um, members coming us, uh, up with us for, for tournaments. Mm-hmm. But we, we also have to understand that there are two completely different things. The, the media coverage is different. The, the demand for the football game, the game is different. So I think the more we try to compare and the more we try to like make them make them look at as one, the more frustrating is going to get because I think we'll never reach the same amount of um, income from media from I think. Jo- j- to be fair, it, it has improved. It has no, definitely no, no. improved and because I I remember when we used to play back then. We, we used to get one article after the game and that's it. Now there's more interest and there's more coverage. Exactly, but it shouldn't, we shouldn't compare between the two. Like, I think we should focus just for on ourselves mm-hmm. and we, we, we should tra- always try to find ways um, better, and be creative enough to make it better, mm-hmm. to, to get more coverage, to get more people on our side, to get more people interested in our game, to watch our game. I think... Um, once you enter like our our circle, I think people will will be engaged immediately because they they can feel the the joy, they can feel the enthusiasm. It's such a big have. community. It's it's like so. I think we should different. just focus on ourselves and how we can make things better rather than just comparing with the things around us with the male football team. I think we shouldn't be in competition with them. I think we should join like forces and be together. We're representing the same country, we're representing the same people, and we're ultimately trying to achieve the same goal. Exactly, but so in an ideal world, wouldn't it be much better if women actually got that much funding and that much attention so that that would be the idea something to add while i totally agree with you that we do not get the same amount of people coming to watch our games but then obviously if you're going to increase the promotion exactly then this will only get better the people will come exactly but but we we, like i said we have to focus on us not comparing with the male team we should focus on us how we can be creative it's not it's not about competing with them you know we we should make it fun for the the expect the spectators Spectators, like they're going to come to, to watch the games maybe we I that, that would be the ideal world. I mean, I, I follow a lot of women's teams abroad. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I follow many teams. And I, I see the, their male counterparts, just seeing them, supporting them. That's already a big step, mm-hmm. which in our country, now I don't, obviously I don't have anything against the men's team and I'm not saying that they're yes, doing yes, something so wrong, you know. But um, it feels that it's different and we're, we're still far, you know, we still have a long way to go in that aspect, you know. Um, like recently we had an event uh, i'm not going to, I'm going to mention where we went and what we did and all that but there were male players and uh, me and another player and we went to this event the organizer the guy um, receiving us to this event he it's like we were just two people standing there he completely sort of ignored us he acknowledged the men the, the, the guys he was like ah hello how are you calling them by, the, by their name blah 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 hello 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 and completely ignored us and we we're just standing there like hi <laughs> you know he didn't say anything to us not even a hello <laughs> and and me and my team and we just looked at each other and like like you would you would want to say something but at the same time they it it, it not it might come across, but they will take it at oh how, how arrogant, because unfortunately that that's it wouldn't be like that. But mm-hmm. but uh, they see it from that perspective, which is sad, you know. So uh, I noticed this thing happened, and and, and it, it it affected me a bit, you know. Now you tell me maybe I, you should have stood up for yourself, but the, the way things were happening, 
like I was tempted to say something mm-hmm. like uh, hi we play for the women's team but do I really need to do that you know what I mean oh, that's the reality no you know so the, uh-huh. were there any other ways that this kind of imbalance has impacted your career and opportunities in sports or do you think it has still uh, well I mean if, if I was younger and I had the, an opportunity to play abroad um, I probably would have considered it at a younger age you know now I'm 31 so it's a bit different mm-hmm. um, but I had, like men had the opportunity to go play abroad from a much younger age I mean now that it's it's become like something that you can reach mm-hmm. being a female footballer so so if you had to compare the two I think that that is something that we didn't have back then mm-hmm. I guess mm-hmm. I think something on the previous topic that you were speaking earlier mm-hmm. is what an opportunity would it be um, when the men's team play they get all the nurseries to watch the games mm-hmm. what a huge opportunity would it be if all the nurseries get the boys to watch our game watch our game and then imagine when they play with girls yeah because if boys from a very young age I take in to support the women's team and kids, they don't care whether they are girls, boys. Exactly. As long as they it's support football. Malta, they, they just football. want to have fun. And it's football. And as long as you give them things yes. to play with and, and to they, clap and to cheer, they, 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 will enjoy. they would still enjoy it. And then I believe it would be less likely for him to bully that girl that he's playing with because then he's taking to support the women's team. I believe that he will be less likely to pick up that girl exactly. that, that he's playing with. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a shift in mentality yes, that is needed. Yes, that's, right. that for that's me, what I was that, going to say. I think it's all about mentality. Mentality, mentality and efforts. For, for example, what Emma mentioned, if, if you know that you're going for an event and there, there's going to be two male players and two female players it's about making that extra effort to just get to know the names of the, these two females exactly. even if you never seen them before exactly. you just like be prepared like even when you go for an interview to interview a player you might not have seen the player before mm-hmm. but yeah. obviously you get you, you get yourself prepared to know some background information about that person. But they have to seek these so opportunities. It's, people, it's about mentality and effort, I think. These opportunities. I think Tuesday's game is a very huge opportunity. Exactly. Like for, it, for it's clubs, one of the highest points we will for reach clubs to take with, as a national team, you know. So that's a huge opportunity there, but Will they take it? We'll <laughs> In fact, because we keep mentioning Tuesday's game and this interview is actually going to come out before that game. So this is a massive match that we're talking about. Yeah? I'm yeah. sure you're not <laughs> yeah. feeling quite excited about it. Can you walk us through a bit uh, your preparation and training to make sure you stay at the top of your game and to be prepared for such a performance? I think preparation, it's not just this week. I think some of us have been preparing for these games all our lives we basically train for games like this and um, we train physically mm-hmm. now it's the time to also train mentally because uh, the physical aspect we go through it all year long but then the mental aspect it's something i think we lack in general uh, as sports so now i think um we go through tactics and those sort of things okay but now it's time to really focus mentally because as i said we train all our lives for this game so it's very important that when we go out there we enjoy the moment as well mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a culmination of all you have yes. worked for coming together in one moment. For, like I said, it, it's like, a, for me personally, the moment they created this Nations League and realized that, uh, guys, we have an opportunity, like it, it, it can be a great thing what mm-hmm. we do this time, you know. Um, so this, is, this can be like the, one of the peak moments with the national team. Last time we... we, we um, achieved a, a, a qualification f- to the next stage was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've been preparing physically and um, things have improved, obviously, the type of training, all right, um, the coach, the, the, the physical preparator. So like Jenny said, we've been training for a long time, but then this week, obviously, um, 
so we had a game on Friday. Mm -hmm. Now we recover, then we start pushing, and then we prepare again tactically for the game. Mentally, every individual prepares in his own her own way. So um, I don't know. Like on game day, we tend to like. Uh, imagine situations that can happen during the game so we need to be full fully focused on it we might feel a bit of pressure since you know like all Malta know about this you know and there's some sort of watching. pressure because we can actually win something but then th that's the moment when we need to find a balance so you need to feel a bit of pressure because it's an important game but at the same time not a lot of pressure that it will affect your performance then you cannot be too, too relaxed because it will affect your performance in a different way. So it's all about finding that balance. Each and every one of us has their own way of, of finding that balance, you know. How do you um, find it for yourself? How do you make I, sure that you're prepared, but at the same time, you're not like dying of nerves? So, you know? so usually I start from the night before. Um, I start, um, I think about my opponents. I watch the clips that the, 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 the coaches send us of the, the other team. Um, I think about what possible um, actions, situations I can find myself in, what could go wrong, but how can I make it better? Um, so you prepare yourself like full focus on, on what can happen. And it's all about, um, how do you say it? Like, like imagining the situation. Um, then on the day, again, in the morning I make sure I have a, like an easy morning and, and, and slowly, slowly I start in, in, like the concentration has to be full on the moment I step on the bus, the moment I step on the bus going to the game, that Focus. is when I am fully like, uh, you know, I keep imagining actions, different actions and, and you know, what, what I can do, what happened, what can, you know, what is expected from me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what my teammates would do. By then we would know the first 11. So I know that Janice would want me to do this, you know, Sean, I would expect me to do that, for example. So uh, it's, it's all about finding your, your right way of, of getting your full focus in, basically. And do you maybe have any self-care practices? Like, I don't know, do you meditate? Do you practice yoga? Do you do anything that... Med meditation sometimes. I just do a couple of breathing exercises, you know, to get myself calm. And and, and what I like doing most as well is, is awareness, being aware of the moment. Like, when I step on the field, I make myself aware. I'm like, okay, this is it, you know? There's nothing like, else. There's nothing else. This is it. Nothing else can get in the way of this. You know, basically. What about you? I think for Tuesday's game, the most important thing is being in the present moment. I think Definitely, it's, yeah. it's, it's enough because the thing we have in front of us and the, the movement we can create by, by this, I think it's, it gives us all the motivation mm -hmm. and just being aware where we're at and what we can achieve, just being there, being present. I think it's enough to, to give us that push for Tuesday. Amazing. Okay. So you've mentioned a bit, so you need each other as a team because of, of course you are operating, you are moving as a un unity, you know, Definitely. you have unity between, you need that unity. Definitely. It's crucial. So how do you maintain strong team unity and communication on and also off the field? Spending the the, uh, the 10 days of the international window together helps, definitely, okay? Because uh, outside of national team, uh, me and Sean are teammates, so we still have that bond going on. We meet every day at training and all that. But with Janice, she's our direct op opponent, like we're fighting for the league against each other sort of thing, you know? But then the moment we get back together as a national team, it's very it comes very natural to us. So we spend a lot of time together, we joke a lot. Um, and we support each other. The moment one of us is down, we, we have we go check on each other. Like hey, it's nothing, you know. Like so. Luckily, luckily we're, we're a good group at the moment. We have experienced players. We have we have new players coming in. Uh, coach is always changing, so so we have many new young ones, uh, which is a great experience for them. So now that we became the older ones we feel like a kind of responsibility to 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 guide them and you know to be prepared for for what's coming and and, and all that basically i think we do have a special group i yes. mean and uh, as they said 
we do play against each other, but it's like it's just a 90 minutes because Definitely, all yes. of us, we are great friends and yes, we yes, have yes, been yes. through personal situations yeah. where we <laughs> really found each other. So for me, the least thing that affects me when I'm in the national team that Shona plays with Sui, that Nicole plays with Hips, we doesn't don't cross care. My mind. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't cross we're my Malta mind. and uh, we really believe. I really believe that we have a very special group. Definitely. And and we we grew sense. up together. For exactly. example, me and Janice, we, we're, we're the same age. We grew together. Um, we used to play with the same team when, when we were young. So it's like we have a, a special bond. Um, we're always... I think that's one of the advantages we have um, Malta. as Malta female Malta. football. Yeah. Small that's island. Small island, small community. Yeah. We all grew up together. Definitely. Even like our social lives. Social we're life. We're, we're, if there's an event, you'll find time. us there, most of us, you know. Like. We're together. So I think if, if I'm down, if I'm going through a tough time, I'll find Jenny's, I'll find the others, like um, trying to cheer me up, like... I can I know that I can talk things through with mm-hmm. with anyone mm-hmm. and I think we have to because obviously we have three two three challenging days that like they're they're sensitive so everything affects everything ultimately um and if we just focus on the the positives the small details I think it will make a big will, difference uh, exactly they will we've mentioned the media and I want to ask you one more time, how do you think the media coverage can be improved to promote gender equality in sports? Because with a lot of things in life, it really does start from the media and then everything kind of follows through. So in your eyes, how can the coverage be improved to make sure that at least there is a kind of fair playing ground, you know, on a kind of media landscape? And what um, would you want to improve? I, I mean, more coverage, not, but not just national team. I think people need to know about the league, what's happening in the league. Mm-hmm. So now lately they've been posting articles about what's happening in, in, in games and all that. Luckily, luckily um, we have new journalists coming in and they've been very supportive and they've been exposing each and every game. And um, so I think that, that that is very important that you get someone interested, you know, mm-hmm. audience reading the, the article. They're like, ah, oh, there, there is, they would be known that there's big cars, we, MGR, hips, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So I think it starts from that and exposing everyone equally, you know, so all the players, they need to know about everyone, you yeah. know. So I, th- I think that's the main thing, mainly, you know. Mm-hmm. I think, like I mentioned before, it's about mentality and effort. Yeah. If, if you have the, the effort, if you want to do something, if you want to promote us, you will promote us. Mm. If, if, if you think that we can achieve the same things and everyone else is achieving, like you will put in the effort to promote us. And obviously we need that promotion because we're still um, growing. young, we're still growing and... We need that. That we need social media because, as as time is passing, obviously life is all about social media. Mm-hmm. Even if you, even if you see an article, it's it's distributed across the whole country. Yeah. So if if a person truly wants us to be promoted. They will put the effort, they will change the mentality and they will promote us. And it doesn't have to be an article because we keep mentioning articles. Mm-hmm. Just a simple post can make a big difference, you know, because even we're, we're lately, mentioning you know, posts, it's all about nowadays, posts, so seeing posts. People nowadays, will, like yes. Malta is full of influencers. Mm-hmm. I think if, if each and every one of the influencers like promotes the game, they... I, I don't know. They 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 encourage people. They encourage people to do a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, why not encourage Definitely. them to come and watch the game? Why not you, per, for example, a, a particular person, a particular influencer, come and watch the game? Mm-hmm. So they will attract uh, uh, people. 
I mean, they're supporting womanhood and also their own country. Exactly. The the like day. these Definitely. people have a huge impact, impact. on on the island because, yes. like, in my opinion, Malta and the it's whole the whole with, world with is obsessed things. with these influencers, and so. they're they're doing a great job and promoting mental health and stuff like that. And we need their help um, to promote us as well. And this is not obviously. A- we go hand in hand mm-hmm. like i think it's it's a nice thing like you help me i help you like definitely yes. we have a lot a of sense of community exactly we have a lot of unpleasant things going on in life and like w- world in general and why not if we have the chance if we can promote each other and help each other and make each other grow why not mm-hmm. and this is not about just about football mm-hmm. i feel that that what's happening on tuesday can be a breakthrough for women's sport in malta so this is this is I f- I feel I special feel moment. I feel it's a special moment for women's sport in Malta. So so this has to be you know for, for every female athlete out there. We're doing know. it for us and for all the for all girls. girls you know dreaming to, to achieve something in sports. So finally, I want to ask you two last questions. What do you want to see more of in women's football? Well, I want to see more play, more girls playing, basically. And um, if actually, it happened a couple of weeks ago. A friend, of, my mom, my mom's colleague, has a daughter, and her dream is to become a professional football player. And that, for me, I'm like, you know, if, if I, 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 I feel that she's lucky that she can have that dream. Yeah, and it's know? actually attainable. It's attainable, you know. Um, it wouldn't have crossed my mind back then if I was her age to, to be a professional footballer. Mm-hmm. It's something I wanted, but it doesn't even cross my mind like professional footballer, you know, how is that possible? But yes, now, now they have the possibilities and um, I want to see more girls playing football. I want them to achieve great things and, and push boundaries basically with regards to training, mm-hmm. you know, and chase their dream. That's it, basically. I think some, this is something that unites all of us. I think uh-huh. for something sure, for sure. that we all have in common, we all have a dream to see the growth in women's football in Malta, in general, worldwide. But for we, us, have, it's we this. feel a huge responsibility to, to make that dream for every young girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I on. agree with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so finally... I want you all to give a closing message, your own closing message to aspiring young female footballers in Malta. What is your message to them? Shona? I have <laughs> yeah, to think about it. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, go for it. <laughs> I think th- there's no secret behind anything. You just have to work hard. Like You have to put in the work. You have to be determined. You have to know what you want and like if, if if you know that you're doing something you love and I think one of the most important things that I think with time we're losing a bit is the amount of effort the amount of input the amount of determination priorities mm-hmm. I think we're losing a bit discipline exactly I think Emma mentioned something earlier about we don't want to make um the, the the young generation um take like, it for granted take it for granted because i think we can see a bit of change in mentality from mm-hmm. when we were young to the young ones i'm not saying it's wrong but like the world is changing so everything affects everything like i said but i think it's important that young girls understand that nothing comes easy you have to earn everything in life Nothing, no one is going to give you something for free. Mm-hmm. So the more you work for it, the the more rewarding it, it will be. If, if someone came in and gave me something for, for free, I wouldn't enjoy it as much as if I worked hard for it and I gained it. And I think the, the young girls, they, they need to understand it. So when things get hard in life, when they grow up, because when you're young, everything is easy, everything is fun, everything is enjoyable. But when you when you roll there, and things start to get tough, then you need the determination you had when you were young to keep you going when things get tough. I think. I think a, a, a positive thing is that now the level 
even of our country is increasing rapidly. Mm -hmm. So now if the young girls, they're not going to put in the work, it's not going to be manageable mm -hmm. because um, when we were young, a lot of girls would make it to the national team. If you're playing and you're a little bit promising, you make it to the national team. But now to make it to the national team, you have to be good physically and mentally. So as Shona said, if they're not going to put in the work, it's not going to be to be easy. So they have to to make it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you have any any message that that is kind of yours that you want to give to these girls? I mean even maybe in the face of, of facing certain um, gender imbalances and, and, and the fight for equality in women's sports, what would you tell them? Um, I, I think it's not just in Malta, it's something worldwide. I think mm -hmm. it's now it's getting a little bit better, but obviously to keep fighting and we'll hopefully we will get there. Mm -hmm. I think you will be judged on whatever you do in life. So if you keep on focusing about the inequalities you have, the lack of resources, I think you'll get mixed up in these emotions and you just shift from from what from your goal. So you just have to focus on yourself, do whatever is in your control mm -hmm. and just focus on that. Everything else is extra. Mm -hmm. Amon? Uh, so my message is um, to obviously dream big, you know, it's important to dream, to, to but dream big, but work for those goals, obviously, as they mentioned. Um, do not let anyone tell you that you cannot do something, okay? If you set your mind to it, you can do it. Us three, we're here because we do a lot of sacrifices, nutrition, training, everything, all right? You need to take care of yourself physically, but... Um, you can do anything that your mind sets that you set your mind to basically amazing amazing ladies thank you all so much for Thanks. joining me here thank today. you for having us and i want to wish you a massive 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 good thank luck you. for your upcoming match Thanks. and continue making malta proud thank you thank, thank you, you. Thanks, yes. thank, thank you, you.